Um, let's go ahead and we'll start with the community comments. Uh, you can talk about anything that's not on the agenda. Uh, please identify yourself and try to keep it to two minutes. Yes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Don Lair. I'm, I'm asking who could I contact in county government to file a formal complaint against waste management? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah. what happened, our collection day was Christmas Day, so it goes mm -hmm. to Thursday. No big deal. We had the snow. Okay, no big deal. It goes to Friday. Late Friday afternoon, no pickup, no phone call, no warning, no nothing. We call up. Oh, we're not coming out. We'll pick it up next week. No, you're not. Pick it up next week. We have a whole bucket full of horse manure, and we had Christmas and everything else. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Because I've been through that. Um, get the name of the, I don't have his phone number or anything, but what you need to do is get, um, his name is John Wilson. They were very demissive on the phone. Oh, don't worry, we're going to give Those you Those aren't the people you I want to talk to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, they were very dismissive. And I didn't want a refund. I wanted the trash pickup. They owe me a service because I can't go anywhere else. And this is unacceptable. And that's who I want to talk to. I want to, uh, uh, who can I? Well, we, we, the problem is we don't have franchise agreement. It's a de facto monopoly, but it's not a legal monopoly. We don't have a franchise agreement. It isn't like they have a green with the county that says only they can travel up your road to go pick up the trash. And they said the reason was the safety, though their trucks couldn't make it up hills in the snow. Yeah, well, and then that I understood for the, 20, for yeah, the, sure, the day after. But the day after that, I had UPS, I had uh, the uh, propane trucks. Everyone's coming down, up and down our road. It's rather flat. And yeah, yet it, they it, didn't make it out. And, it, and although there is no franchise agreement for waste hauling, there is a contractual sole source contract with waste management to handle the dumps, right? So you can't, and what they do is if you want to self haul, which you legally can do under the county code, you have to pay their high, high fee, one ton fee or whatever it is, and you have to yeah, take your, years. haul your waste in once a week, and you have to show the receipts to the county or you get found to be in violation of the code. So while there is no franchise agreement on the, the hauling, there is a sole source agreement for the exorbitant rates you have to pay to do an alternative to waste management, which is self-hauling. So, uh, <clears throat> and so there should be some sort of leverage, just given that fact alone, the sole source arrangement. That's my understanding. Waste management has exclusive contract to operate the dump. Is that no, not No, waste management owns the dump. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, but no, but it's under a conditional use permit issued by the county. So, what's going to help you the most is getting a hold of the manager because that's what's helped me every single time. And well, it, it may help hiccups. me individual, but we, someone has to hold this company accountable. Like I said, their, their dismissive attitude on the phone is unacceptable for a, uh, for a monopoly. And, yeah, you know, no, so, I agree with that. So, Chuck, a couple of years ago, the two gentlemen came for the trash um, who handled the. Uh, the, uh, the commercial, contracts, commercial the, the commercial yeah. franchises from the county, talked about, and a lot of people expressed interest in, you know, having the county uh, create franchises or control the franchises for the commercial pickup here in Acton because of this reason. And I thought they were coming back to us at some point. I don't know about commercial. I know residential franchises been brought up yeah. periodically. Well, both of them discussed. Yeah, it was totally shot down by. Us. A majority of people. It might be trying to come back again because we had so much trouble with the illegal dumping of people not buying any trash service and just pitching it out you know, at the end of the dirt road or whatever that, that we might be coming back with some other option. One of the problems is there's so many different properties with so many different situations. It's one thing to be in parts of Little Rock or Lake Los Angeles where the houses are fairly close together. It's another thing in parts of Akron or Juniper Hills where they're up. Uh, narrow dirt roads, uh, but yeah, that's, the, the illegal dumping is just such a problem in so many places that we're thinking about what else to do. Well, this appears to be a business well, decision. Yeah. They weren't going to come back out until our next collection yeah, day. Yeah, they're trying to, yeah, save on the, the trip. So but even then they didn't come out. Right. So, uh, Sandra, is it Pearlsey or Pearlsey? Pearlsey. Yes. 
So uh, we had a, a meeting here at the library uh, about six months ago. Uh, yeah, six or seven months ago. Um, and uh, several council members, we were there, and she basically was saying that they were, they're going to pursue trying to reignite that conversation about having the franchises. So they were asking the community what, uh, what we would like to see, what would be some nice things that they could offer as basically incentive to that. And so, like, I, you know, weekly service? Yeah, 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 like actually picking up trash was like one. Uh, uh, no, no, but we, in all seriousness, we, we did say, you know, things like, uh, you know, more you know, vouchers, different things like that, that, that you know, more widespread. And, and that is the thing. But vouchers are offered by the uh, cities yes. because they have uh, franchise, franchise yes. yes. So, 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 you know, we talked, to, we discussed some of those, uh, you know, having, you know, kind of a community place to, to take, you know, large rides, which these are all things that have been discussed at, at length before. All that, as I'm saying, is, is that, to, you know, to piggyback on what you're saying, yeah. here, it sounds like maybe that if we have this conversation, having the, the two gentlemen maybe back out, maybe having waste management back out to, to kind of rehash this again. I know that, um, that uh, you know, the folks at Waste Management have been receptive. You know, I, I don't think they handle it properly. Like in other words, like they, whoever you are, customers, they should be responsive. It shouldn't require calling person X, Y, or Z or pulling magic rope a certain way to get the response you want. Uh, but I think re making it aware that there's still ongoing issues because you're not the only person who I know from you know posts online and things like that that a lot of people have you know issues. Because not only that, so you missed that day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the next collection it wasn't going to be on New Year's, right? Like, right. so, so now you're talking ten days plus, you know. And now, you, like you said, right now it's even longer. And we're talking a Christmas holiday. You yeah, have people right. over. So you yes, have, you have more trash and, 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 and you know, know, unwrapping gifts and boxes yes. and all that. Stuff. So, um, I, I think that we ought to reach out to, to all those folks. I don't remember the gentleman's names that came from. I don't. I, I can look back through stuff. Here. Probably you know, part of the problem, though, too, is their call center is nobody that is around here, so they're not familiar with the area yeah. or anything that's going on. Because I know when I work for a uh, waste company in Sun Valley in my prior life, that we had call takers there that were, you know, lived, and then right when I started in the area, and then right when, before I left, they all went to call centers in Texas, and they don't, they don't know. Right. You know, so. Right. Well, my daughter just moved out here just recently, and she was back up dirt road, too, but um, she called. And she ended up calling another day because she couldn't get the right answer. She, you know, this person didn't know what they, what she could get up mm -hmm. there. She ended up getting like five different answers. I don't even bother calling those people. I just call. <coughs> I, I just call John. I just call John straight. If I don't get John. She's for new trash yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She, she, she got she got like three different costs for the same thing. Well, that's and, yeah. That's yeah. a salesman's end of it. Yeah. 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 Usually the problem is they don't comment and they still charge you. Yes. Yeah. And they refuse to credit you back. Yeah. And that's usually the problem. Yeah. They well, probably don't even know you have a second bin there, except for the, the driver bin. when he shows up once a week, you know. Yeah. They probably you're... drop the bin off and, you know, just to take care of you. Mm. And, you know, it's not like they have a problem. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like. I'm figuring that's probably what happens. Those things go all over the place. Eventually they'll catch on. Yeah, eventually the driver will be like, hey, what you might want to do is have your wife contact the driver and have them. You know, oh, we, if we, we take care of our drivers. We, yeah, we tend yeah to I mean, they deserve it. They got yeah. the hardest job. Yes, we it, take care Nobody of, knows what they go through. They got good people working for them yeah. at that level. It's and just the they can always itself. radio their supervisors or something and be like, you know what, this bin's been here for. Because the guys have called something. The company doesn't is not accountable for anything, and they act like it. It's well, like, I don't have to remind me the old uh, Lily Tomlin line: "We don't care, we don't have to." We'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they don't have to. It's our waste management. <laughs> well, uh, well, we'll do some research, find out who, and then okay. we'll, we'll try to get them back out on, on, a, on an upcoming agenda. Just, I, I think that's probably. It may be something we're going to have to do probably once a year. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I imagine we're, you know, we're, I'm not the only one to have that problem. No, no, you, no definitely not. And, and it, it, I see constant posts about myriads of different issues uh, that, that stem from miscollection on a regular basis without snow. Like, you know, it doesn't take even snow to have them miss a, a day. And uh, so I think that it's probably time to just kind of revisit that and talk about that. And, um, especially maybe in light of, uh, you know, the, them kind of stating they were going to kind of try to reignite that conversation about a franchise agreement. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that we ought to have some, you know, 
Clear talks about what that means. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I personally don't subscribe to like if we, you know, if also bird tech came in, like it would be any better. I think when anybody has kind of a de facto monopoly, there's a certain level of, you know, not caring that oh, yeah. that goes on. So, so I don't know that trading one devil for another is going to be any better. Other than, you know, there's a certain level of chain that we would have on somebody who has an actual monopoly, which is going through the county to, to get some. Right. If, we had, if we had a franchise, the right. county would be. So, so, so there is something to be said for that, um, and that, you know, but I think that that, that whole conversation probably needs to be. Yeah. What we have the procedure the county can do to officially set up a franchise. Yeah, well, so that, that's what we talked about when they were here. Yeah. Whatever it's the tribe. Yeah. There, there is, there were like three types of franchises, and I don't remember the, but the one of them was like an open franchise. Yes. That's what we and have. that's what that's what waste management is talking about. Um, the county is thinking about that too. Whereas, yeah. But they're under they're under a open franchise agreement right now. It's my understanding that no, it's, 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 a it's, it's just, just open. They well, there, there were different do whatever they want to do. Well, they're okay. required to do certain things by the county still, even though you sure. Yeah. If Burtek wanted to come and serve acting tomorrow, no, 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 no. It doesn't give them ex exclusive rights. Yeah. Anybody can no, come and they, do they it. Have but they still they have to have open franchise. They do have the CUP on the Lancaster landfill that that uh, you know essentially sets operating conditions for the landfill is essentially what that says. I'll have to go back and, well, and yeah and I mean you can have a, you can have a hauler that doesn't own an a landfill. They can take their trash over the well for the most part wherever they want. For the most part. Yeah like, like the river. you can't take it to another county like the last people did. Yeah that's what happened to them. <laughs> why about they would drive from Acton right? all the way out to I don't remember where it was at. Uh, yeah it was to Hatchford. To Hatchford. Yeah. <laughs> Can, can somebody else pick that cross? Yeah, you know, I'll, 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 you got it. I got okay. it. Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of it. I'm pretty small right now. No, 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 I, I got it. I, I, I identified the pain, and, and I have a pretty good relationship with, uh, you know, with Rosie just from okay. talking stuff. So I don't know. <coughs> Thank you. I mean, I know there was, what was the name of the other girl that, she's been a couple Abby. of meetings. At, yeah. Uh, she, she's come to a couple of meetings, um, she but she's not here today. Me. Yeah, I have a card, but but uh, I asked her if she could do something about the crows, because they always get the trash in the yeah. crows. Well, they're, they're ravens or federal yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, migrating birds. Yeah. I wish they didn't migrate from here. No, they don't. They, yeah. just, they do, they follow they the trash. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they're smart too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll put this on the we'll scan this and get back. Um, all right, any other community comments? Yes, um, my issue has to do kind of with, with fencing. It was, okay, I live two miles up a bumpy dirt road at the end of Corral, so I'm the second to the last property way up there. Way up there. You've gotten like a bunch of my letters. Yeah, I all. didn't talk about that in correspondence tonight, so, but now I don't have to, so go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I decided. I, You're Cap Kathy? Kathy, yeah. Um, but this thing is, um, it shouldn't, it's, it's pretty much a non-issue, really, because if you look at the, the way the code's written, it's, um, the, the way it's written, I can't even see it, but it says 70%, and you know, for, for instance, I only have a section along my driveway, and it goes down, and it's, it's here's the road, here's my driveway, about 160 feet of it, and the reason it's there is, the blight from next door to the wall, like crap and junk next door. And the guy um, with the the, seed the weeds, the weed meat. seeds, the trash, the rats and squirrels that always come through, that all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I wish I could put it twenty feet high, but you only can yeah. put it so high. So anyways, and then so that's 160 <coughs> feet. My total perimeter fence around my whole property is two hundred and thirty eight. You do a calculation, that's eight percent. And according to code, you can have 30%. Okay, well, this is where the issue comes in. Okay, Geringer's not here, right? No, I'm not here. Okay, good. Chuck, I'm cool with you. Okay. So, um, anyways, this comes with Geringer. Um, you know, everyone knows who he is, right? Anyways, I've been sending him, um, because since the neighbors have been there in May, there's their only neighbor, and they are just, it's just been a problem. Um, nice vacant, it was, anyways, now it's in the cargo container there, that's really, you've seen the pictures, I, yes. I sent you guys yeah, all, all every, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we sorry. forwarded, no, we forwarded them to the town, to the, when you, when you send it just to us, 
we forward it, you know, you, you give us permission yeah. to forward it to the county. But yeah. now you're talking directly with yeah, the county. Yeah, and Chuck's so, gotten a bunch of that yeah. stuff. So we're, and you got the sign, the sign that uh, she put uh, up yeah, that says yeah, the F yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, that nasty word. Yeah, not okay. Um, but anyways, so anyway, in one of those pictures that I had sent to good old uh, Danny boy, uh, Gerringer, <coughs> um, me. you know, he get, I, obviously he was, <coughs> well, bless you. Sorry. He, he was getting annoyed. I mean, it's obvious. You can tell in his emails the way his little responses are. He's getting snotty. He's been snotty to me on the phone. Just And he threatened to put a violation on your property. That's what he said. Yeah, and the email is actually his response. I had sent a picture, and I actually intentionally, because I stood in the bed of my truck, and I was taking a picture because I wanted him to see where it was, how close it was to my driveway, the cargo container, the RV trailer, the, all the Jeeps, all the vehicles, all the junk over there. Um, and these people just bought the property in May, okay? And they just putting all this junk there. Um, anyway, so they took the photograph, including part of my fence. Well, he kind of like blows me off in, in the first part of the email. And then the last part, the last sentence, he writes, oh, but whoever owns the fence, and he, he can see clearly that I'm in a bed of a truck and I'm taking a picture and he knows that that's my fence. He said, whoever has that fence with the screening on it, they're in violation of acting CSDs. And of course, I just went nuts on that. I just go, oh my gosh, please leave my shade cloth alone, you know, da 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 da. So I was writing all these emails because I was really in a panic. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, right? I ended up talking to him on the phone, calling him up, and on the phone he said, well, as long as there's no complaints. Now remember, where I live, at the end of a bumpy road, Nobody comes back there. Even my parents don't want to come up. They come up twice, <laughs> twice a year. No, it's that bad. My brother, who lives in Acton on Katrina, nice paved road, he did not even want to come over. He comes over once in a while if I need some help. Seriously, you need help. But other than that, nobody wants to come up there because it's so bad. It's a real pretty property, not next door, but my property's real nice. But getting up there, I hate it. I hate the road. Fred Brady told me years ago, oh, you'll love it. Eventually, down the road, you'll love it. No, no. It's been 18, no, going on 20 years now. I hate it still. But so what he wrote back was that, that note, and I just went nuts on that. And um, when I ended up, not nuts like in a nasty way, I mean nuts, I mean I was scared. I was like, I don't want that taken off because it's, it's there for all of us. And you asked us to see if we could investigate. Yeah, so the first thing I did after he wrote that was I, um, I actually, this was September 12th. I sent you guys yeah, an we, email. We agendized that and had yeah, that discussion. Yeah, and so. I said, you know, maybe it's time we need an update or something like that because I was all panicked that he was going to, you know, and then I ended up getting the CSD out and I talked to my brother and he goes, no, he's out of line because you, you, you're you clearly safe. Well, that's but, what, that's, what, I'm glad you're here because that, that was a comment I was going to make. We haven't gotten back to, the, you know, you yeah. sent a bunch of emails between like, like December 16 and today. Yeah. I haven't, got, I'm a correspondent secretary. I haven't gotten back to you because... It's, it's okay. It's all right. So I wanted to have this. No, I get it. I get it. But then I ended up. Um, okay. So then um, some more time goes by. Okay. Now he tells me out on the phone. Okay. He tells me on the phone. Oh well, you know. And I, he goes. Um, and I said, but I'm. I'm. I, it's only on that section. It's only on on along the driveway. I said. I said I've got 665 feet on both sides. It's five. You know. It's um, then I have to get the notes from Jackie or whatever, or your right. that I can write the ones from okay. the last meeting that I missed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite finished with, the, with December 2nd. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, I, mean, I don't know if you want me to move forward November 18th to everybody. I, I know I had read them and I, I read, read them. You read them? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a long time ago. Oh, oh, well, well, yeah. Yeah, but I know I, I know. But nobody wrote me any yeah. changes or anything. No, I didn't see anything. Can we just accept that November 18th to get that off the table? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I would entertain what you do that. Did you take notes or did I take notes on that one? I had notes from the meet from the meeting and I didn't yeah. say yeah. anything. Yeah. Like, I thought I sent them out. Maybe November 18th. Thank you. Thank you. Because I thought. Do we have a second before? I second that. All right. Thank you. Bye. Any other things? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We have a second. Uh, any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All opposed? All right, motion's carried to accept the November 18th. Thank you, Fred. Uh-huh. All right.
And I have, report. I have mail for all the people. Yep. So it's together, and then this is for Joy, and this is for Kelly. These are from uh, Christmas cards from Supervisor Barger and uh, Tom Lackey. And there might have been one in there from Scott Wilkes office, but they didn't have all of our names directly. So. Okay. Um, Treasurer's report, anything? Yep, yep, we've got $698.05. And the only expense we've had for the last few months is the $15 bank charges. I did go into the, it's $15 a month. I did go into the bank and talk to Arlette, the manager, to see if we could Do not work. have that. And she talked to her supervisor, and it's, just can't go away. Wow. Well, when we're talking about treasury. Um, <coughs> the the I would all say women's club. The women's club we got a couple nice fat checks from the county from Barger's office for things like emergency supplies and stuff. What? So, well, the county's giving away money to nonprofits. I like to think maybe we can figure out how to get some of that too. Who do we need to invite? What kind of letter do we need to write? Wow. At, at least enough to cover the minimum balance to not get the bank yes. <laughs> Cuz I, I don't know what, you know, banks have whatever their minimum like if you have a yeah, $2,000 balance or something then they don't. Yeah, we're not close to that. Yeah. So and they also uh, very um, I don't know the right word. Um, they also very nice and they gave the money as well and Edison. And Edison. <clears throat> Liz Silman. Are you kidding? Pray to tables. That's where it's at. So, there's generous donors out there. We just need to appeal to them. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's something we gotta look at for the year. So, but they did. I mean, there were the, the key. I think is to have a specific thing for which the donations sure, sure, sure. are made. So it's fifteen dollars a month times twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Just to maintain, yeah, just just to maintain our checking account. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and that's the. Okay, it's well, been that way for a long time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, plus we have a safety deposit box down there too, with that title in it. That, yeah. So I'm sure I'll get a bill for that at some point. Do you have to have a minimum, or is it a free checking account if you have a minimum balance? I don't usually know. they were about two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, I'm sure there's some minimum that. I, I don't even know how many so free any kind of banking there is. Anymore. Unless you have a direct deposit, you have to like sign up for all the things, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a service fee yeah. world. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a certain amount, it, I mean, because I don't pay any fees. I just have a certain amount. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that. It was really. That was a weird deal. Yeah. Okay, and I'm sure this will come as a surprise to very many people. But our, um, we suggest President Jeremiah Owen, Vice President Tom Faustin, Recording Secretary Kelly Tino, Corresponding Secretary Jackie Pear, and Treasurer Pam Walsh. Okay. Wow. Was that right? Yeah. Troy, you don't want a job? Or do you have something? We can be questioning. <laughs> 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 I, well, I think everybody should be. We should name a maybe a sergeant at arms or whatever. So oh. we, have, when we have volatile meetings. Would Troy, would you I, I wouldn't to? be able to do that. That's why we usually have an officer. Uh, a deputy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Doctor said they can't do that. So. All right. Okay. So <laughs> I would entertain a motion. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Do we accept that slate? Um, I would think, yeah, it's moved to accept yeah, the slate. Yeah. Opposed. Are you opposing? No, I moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to oppose. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor of accepting the slate as presented? Say aye. 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 I'll vote. All right, motion's carried. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, zone change on the bond property. Okay, so um, at the last meeting, this one kind of confused me when I saw that email come in. Yeah, it, because you see, no, we got 
So we have clarification. Which well, email address? On Blanca Banya's own change. Okay. Because so, it seems like it might have ping ponged a little bit in the past, or? Um, I did talk to um, the owner of the property. Mr. Jundy? Yes, Les, and um, I advised him to please come to this meeting. And obviously, he has He's not, not here. come. So. Is, is, is Mr. Gessert here? Because he, he wrote so an email. Email. Represent, saying he represented Mr. Jundy at, at one point. Okay, that's, several I think the woman. I think it. Oh, Ms. Gesser. Sorry. I, I think she. She's a friend of his, and she oh. helps him with bookkeeping and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So she's not legal. Sure. It, it, uh, here, Look, here, here, yeah. So here's a big zoning map of a zoning that it was in this community before the AV plan was adopted. In 2014. It, yes. In fact, this is the zoning map as of 2010, but it hadn't changed. And so, um, and I can open up, it's huge. And on these parcels, there are two or three parcels that, according to this map, the zoning were zoned commercial. But when the AV plan was adopted, suddenly they were switched to industrial. And Mr. Jundy was concerned that the Acton Town Council had asked for that change, which of course we did not. We asked for all zoning to remain the same, with the exception of the CPD zoning that was in, in your San Gabriel and because of the CPD restrictions and the county made that change. And then they reverted the archery property back to um, ag because it never got used. That was a DP operation. So anyway, so he said he really wanted to have his property back to be zone, uh, commercial. And so, because um, <clears throat> I actually met him at, at was the, it was at the, um, the magic show, the community club's magic show. And so he, that's when he came up to me and asked me, why do you guys resume my property? He didn't say it like that. He was very nice. And I'm like, oh, he didn't. Anyway, so I suggested he contact the town council and ask, you know, if the council would try to request the county put the zoning back the way it was at the next, next time the county does some sort of general plan update, which they do every now and then. Like they just did it a couple of, six months ago to address um, boundary issues and their GP GPS system is now more accurate, so they knew Act Acton's boundary better than it was in 1995. <laughs> At any rate, um, so that's why I suggested that we got the email. We were asked to put it on the agenda, which we did, but there's nobody here at the last meeting. So we put it on the agenda for this meeting, but there's nobody here. So we're, we're, we were uncomfortable going forward without actually having a discussion yeah. as a council with the person asking for this action. So I can just can't say that he hasn't been feeling too well lately either. So well, if he fun. wants to send an agent, you know, that's fine too. Just he can email us and let us know we send him. Uh, call him again and ask him. I mean, I've known him for years. So. Sure, mm -hmm. he's a very well, nice and, man. And, and, and yes. you know, if in your communication with him, it, it, it won't there won't be a meeting at the end of January. So it would be February before we would have okay. a, it would be on. So I mean, it's a month out. I mean, so yeah, maybe I mean, that's enough yeah. time that they could. Plan to have be here. Have you decided there will be no additional meeting in January? I think at this point, yeah. Oh, this will not have any. Okay. Yeah, so, so, it's currently industrial. Zone, yes. Yeah. M. M1. 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 And it was commercial. Yes. And it would go to rural commercial. It or was it just, be, I think, C2. It was C2, but it now with the new. Designations it would be. It would go to rural commercial. Rural commercial. Okay. And actually, more than one property was flipped. One property was switched from commercial to ag. Another yeah, was, property yeah, was switched. Yeah, it was all like flip flopping. Yeah, it was really. And were they flipped when the new when the new eighty plan? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know how that happened. We ne never asked for it. Somebody in regional planning just colored it blue. And the reason we never saw it because I was pretty careful. Going through, you remember those days yeah. we were there, Tom, too, yeah. looking at the whole map. But what had happened is on the map that the county gave, right on his property was a big, like, I don't know, letter that yeah, was, like that was colored day. red. And so I thought his property stayed red and didn't turn blue. But then when I looked at it later, I'm like, oh, wait, maybe maybe that red goes with the letter and not the zoning. It was hard to tell, though. It really was. So uh, so I didn't catch it. But So it was, the property... Uh, Next to it, the Acton truck parking or whatever that thing is, that was a commercial property that yeah. turned industrial? No, that was that, that was, was always industrial. industrial. Yeah. So you would have opened up a door. And maybe that's so, why they well, did it. Well, then maybe that's this why parcel, they did it. This parcel and that parcel. surrounded by industrial. And this is La Cabana here. Right. And then these parcels, 
north of Soledad were commercial, and now one is ag. Maybe they both are German ag. I don't remember now. So, but he's only talking about this part. Yeah, I, I think is it Act and Faith Bible on that one. Yeah, or maybe it's next. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, yeah. Because they, maybe they're not happy yeah. about the rezone either. I don't know. So that was one of the things I wanted to discuss. Is like, well, let's not do this for just one person if everybody's yeah. unhappy. But since I don't even want to have the discussion since none of the property owners are here. So what's that? Yeah, that's interesting. Though. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how that happened. There was a lot of weird last-minute zone changing that was going on that we had to drive down to LA. And like, remember that? That yeah. was that was that was bad, tense, bad. So that was know. just <laughs> bad on toast. But anyway, but that, this wasn't part of it. So is it is <laughs> because it was is bad. It, is it because if it's industrial, you can't have a restaurant on it. I don't know. I have not looked. I, I'm sure he could. I, I haven't looked at the. That might be what. Or he couldn't do any improvements to or anything like that maybe you well have a restaurant there the reason i suggest that you talk to us is because we have a lot of heartburn with some of the industrial uses and uh, you know kelly you've done all a lot of it. you and ruth did all the heavy lifting on that and you have too on um, the problems we've had with industrial uses so it's like why would we want more and we would never Athens support it dump half of it i mean we would never have supported more right. industrial zone problems yeah. not not on your life. It's so ugly down, driving down there. Uh, it's much better, but it is not beautiful, that's for sure. Well, drive down my street. Every other house is like a dump. I mean, the property, uh, people don't take care of There's no. no pride. No pride. All right. So, so we're going to table. I guess so. Uh, do you mind speaking to Mr. Jundi and seeing if he oh, can't, no. if he's, can't come? He's a friend, friend, you know. Yeah. 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 So maybe he can send an agent to. Ask him to send someone if he can't come and film. Yes, yeah. just so that we can, if, you know, move forward or not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Get it clear. Take a while, I'll give him a call tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. And ask him if he'll come the first meeting in February. Yeah, I'll put it on there for that. Okay. All right. Uh, announcements and correspondence. Okay. Um, in the preparation of our response to the OII, the ATC has conducted extensive evaluations of pub, uh, public safety, whatever, PSPS, um, public safety power shutoff events and notices and filings made by Edison and others in the OII proceeding. Today, we received a communication from the Agadolci Airport, Air Park, that I, I thought should be shared with the community. It is our understanding that the air park has, at, at its own expense, brought in a large generator in order to power their water well so that there would be no interruption in supplying water for any firefighting efforts during any Edison PSPS event. One of the issues that we're, and we'll talk about it later, that we're stepping into on this OII is um, the, the possibility of Edison's PSPS events either causing fires or, or resulting in fires, I should say, or even causing them, or hindering firefighting efforts. Um, and so we have, been, we have been told in our own public meeting here that, um, and I, I don't know if it was at Agua Dulce, but it was here that the, um, because the PSPS events in October caused electricity to be shut down at the air park, the air park couldn't be used to support or firefighting efforts. So I tried to step into that because I don't like to report hearsay. Um, and so I conferred with the air park and that's the information about that. But I think that's just unbelievably commendable. But at their expense, not Edison's, right. but at their own expense, they yeah, do it. So. I agree, I read that today. And it's yeah. very, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's amazing that they, they provide the water. So they also said that they have an open pit, an open something to, uh, that they can tank, dip out of, yeah, and they yeah. also have a tank. They can yeah. tanks so they can fill. the water and the electricity right. and the generator. Right. So without electricity, they can supply a certain amount of water until it runs out, and then they re rely on the well to fill it. So, you know, great, um, you know, great community members there. Yeah. Yep. What I found interesting was that they, they said yes, they put in their generator because of PSPS, but I would like to know if we should follow up with them and ask if Edison gave them any kind of warning or asked them or took, gave them any kind of, you know, said, hey, we're going to be doing this, maybe you should prepare, prepare for yeah, that's that. in any way. That, we, that's a good idea. I didn't, I did send a follow-up request, but it did not ask that question. That's a good question. Um, did Edison ever talk to them and say, hey, you're going to lose your water pumping 
you know, in your firefighting capability unless you do Or did they just do it proactively? Yeah, so they, yeah. Were they, they even aware that that, that Right. Or did they do They must have, because they said they got the generator because of No, 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 I'm saying is Edison aware that that, that happens at the, right. the I'd like to know if Edison went and did their homework and reached yes. out to the people. They said they'd like cell, cell tower <coughs> operators, you know, water suppliers, all those things. To see if they did their due diligence. So far, we've not found, not found any cases. Well, we know they didn't do their due diligence mm -hmm. with the uh, so, cell phones yeah. because they stood here saying that's On the this, cell phone's yeah. responsibility. Everybody not this. Ours. Yeah. Like, Several like, companies said, well, so we, we don't stepped count. in that issue. Right. But the did, did they yes. even tell them that this was coming? And you know, did they even say, hey, you're going to be out for 72 hours or yeah. whatever? Right. Yeah, that that's a good question. I didn't yeah, ask yeah. that question, but the question I did ask was that because I, the point that toward the argument that we're making. Um, the question I did ask was, did you have to use your generator to support firefighting efforts on the tick or any other fire during October PSPS events? Because if that's the case, then that's the argument we make. It's like, hey, if these people had voluntarily done it, then Edison's PSPS would have hindered firefighting efforts because this whole air park resource would have been. And they actually, in their OI, I don't know if you guys or anybody's had a chance to read what Edison filed with the PUC on the OII, but they they step up and proudly admit that when the San Bernardino Fire Department asked for them to re-energize the circuit so that they could use water pumps in a firefighting effort, Edison looked at the situation and decided, no, that poses a too big a fire safety risk, so they told the fire department no, and then they told the fire department there were other resources, water resources around. So one of the points we're think, making is that, well, there's always water resources around in the oceans out there 60 miles away. But the further away these resources are, the longer the delay time is for water delivery, the larger the fire uh, grows. So, so it, I'd be curious how, the, how close the next place for a, a plane to float is it? You know, is the Bokeh Reservoir? I mean, I don't that's know what, that's why I asked. That's yeah. why I asked. In, 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 and we'll talk yeah. about that. Is that we're asking the PUC yeah. to do a deep dive on that claim right there because that was, I mean, first of all, you have a, not a hypothetical, but an actual, real life safety concern fire going on. And, and you don't service that concern because of some theoretical, potential, awesome. hypothetical thing that might happen. And you, you give that greater weight than the actual fire event facing you. It, it's so, preposterous. Well, here's, so now Edison is not only an expert in meteorology, they're an expert in water resources. Yes, and oh yes. And they talk about how, no how important it is yeah. to keep coordinating and how they've done this and they coordinate with all these water to, to let these uh, to let the fire department know other water resources are around. I'm like, I think the fire department knows exactly where all its water resources are. And what's most efficient for them to fight the fire? Exactly. But in the Sunday's LA Times, there was an article about the uh, University of California did a study on the amount of acreage and uh, buildings that were destroyed. And even though uh, the fire season was not nearly as bad as it's been the last three years, and it gave a lot of the credit to the fact that the PSPS that, that shut down the, the... Oh, did it? Oh, I didn't yeah, see that. I thought yeah. you were saying They, they said, no, but don't lose your focus on most of the fire starters still by humans. But California doesn't, other than the mammoth area, doesn't have a lot of uh, lightning fires. Right. They come from the mammoth or the power lines. And the power lines, because of the shutoffs, um, were lessened by a, a significant amount, enough to at least notice. So don't expect this to end. This only after yeah. I read the article, I said this is only. Well, going to be there's always going to be whitewash articles like that, which yeah. is why we have to have our facts straight, which is what we're doing, and we're pointing to the Tehachapi fire that was caused because of the generator. Right. We're discussing the tick fire, and I have requested the the fire department. I, I was up front with them, told them why I'm doing it, paid them, sent them the twenty dollar check for the incident report on the tick fire because if it it has eyewitness accounts have been conveyed both here at our meeting and at the Aguadal Town Council meeting, that the tick fire um, source was a barbecue smoker that was being used by a property owner who had no power and he or she was cooking outside. And so, you know, it's the same thing with the Tatsu fire. That was absolutely a fire that was started because of a generator, a tunnel we blew through the exhaust and started the fire. 
Poor guy's house Sorry. burned down. Oh yeah, he burned his own house down. I'm not, no. I'm not laughing. I'm sorry. It didn't spread anyplace else. But they're yeah. making things work. So, so I, uh, District 37. Animal Valley voters can learn at a January 15 meeting about changes in the way elections will be conducted in Los Angeles County, starting with the March 3rd presidential primary election. <clears throat> a community meeting put on by the LA County Registrar Recorder and County Clerk's Office will be at from 6 to 7.30 on January 15th at the Lancaster Library, 601 West Lancaster Boulevard. Rather than citizens voting on election day at the polling place to which their neighborhood is assigned, citizens will be able to vote at any one of a thousand LA County vote centers, which will be open up 10 days before election day. Citizens will still be able to vote by mail as well. More fraud, more fraud. If we, if we, uh, we have drafted comments on the Animal Valley homeless plan prepared by shelter partnerships and the proposal by the Department of Regional Planning to allow homeless shelters as a primary use on A1 and A2. We really need to get those letters out, so as soon as we have approvals, I will send them. I think we got approvals from Jeremiah. I got a written approval from Jeremiah on both or one? Uh, both. Okay, so the rest of you? I'm sorry, I'll read that. Just I did too. Well, if you did, just could you just send an email that I'm yeah. like, I'm good, and then we can send it off. All right. so. um, We've been asked by Mr. Van Wick regarding who enforces CCRs. We've discussed that. Um, we've been CC'd on several emails from the Department of Regional Planning regarding code violations oh, on Corollas and uh, parcel 3216-013-047. I haven't had a chance to respond to those yet, but it seems that uh, DRP is involved, and we've discussed that at length already. We received an email discussing personal, per, discussing personnel changes at LASA, the homeless uh, LA what, homeless, sure. what does LASA stand for again? Homeless Services Authority. Homeless Services Authority. Okay. Uh, announcing that two training opportunities will be held for volunteers who wish to participate in the 2020 Homeless Count. Those uh, meetings, those are trainings will be on January 16 and January 18. Their goal is to train everyone in advance so they can arrive at their deployment site with the necessary paperwork so they can simply take their tally sheets and go. Please contact www dot they count will you dot org if you wish to participate. On Friday, December 20, I met with Mr. Antos to discuss the qualifications that the Santa Clara River Watershed Steering Committee coordinator should have. It's a paid position that could really almost be a full-time job if done properly. Mr. Antos, he seems like a dedicated and secu uh, sincere individual who really wants the program to succeed. I was really impressed by him. He's a contractor with Public Works and I just really thought he was something else. He described uh, one way in which rural residents could perhaps participate in the steering committee. Um, but, so for example, we know we have Paul Alba who's got three seats, but that looks kind of bad. So two of those seats could be taken potentially by acting residents. The problem is they have to be county employees. So, but they can still live in, because those are county, uh, those seats are allocated to county people who represent us. So. Uh, so it's it's an idea, you know. We're trying to figure out how to shake that tree. So that's a that's a shaky <coughs> opportunity. Um, and what I told him was that uh, at a minimum, whoever the steering committee coordinator is, they have to not live in the city of Santa Clarita, be employed by the city of Santa Clarita, have a family member employed by the city of Santa Clarita, send kids to school in the city of Santa Clarita, have, just have have strong ties to to the rural unincorporated area. And um, he said, well, what, what, if there's, he asked if there could be good things that could come out of this, because he asked me, I said, well, at a minimum, just don't hurt our community. And I explained the drainage problems we have up there between uh, McHenry and Desert Road, yeah. and some, you know, bad flood control problems cause terrible situations in our community. And um, anyway, he, he wants us to think about, the, it, think about it, the program more positively. And like, well, if your minimum is to not get hurt, let's do, let's do something. I mean, I was trying to be frank with him. It's like, at a minimum, you cannot cause us problems. And we've discussed them at length in other meetings. So anyway, um, we received an inquiry regarding the status of our request to install a four-way stop sign at Red Rover. I've not responded to it yet, but I recall that request was rejected by Public Works. Uh, perhaps we should resubmit the request to Public Works because it's a, you know, they keep saying that they want to do traffic calming and 
this would go a long way towards that. So maybe, I don't know what you guys think. If we do a request for it again, would we put, could we put other locations also? Yeah, yeah. If you guys have ideas, and that's how we got Ruthie, really. She got the, uh, the one there at Santiago at yeah. Soledad. And then also she got the one at the park, mm -hmm. and, which uh, is great, really important. And so, I mean, they will say yes to some. They just. They need to put a lot of I think what that's a great idea. Like so that. if you guys, if people have ideas where to put them, let's make it, let's do a big, yeah. a big request then. Send it to the town council and we'll roll that forward. Uh, there will be a 25th district congressional candidate forum hosted by the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce on January 8th. It's open to the public, but reservations are required. Contact the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce if you're interested in it. I already signed up for it because I went to the last one. Board of Supervisor seat, and it was very interesting. So, if anyone wants to join, I'll be there with you. Oh, did you sign up already? Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> um, we received a request for information regarding how to get Burn Castle Road repaired. I've not had the opportunity to respond to this request. However, I have determined that a portion of the access to the requester's home is a county maintained right away. I should I'll try to convey this and provide public work contact information to the requester as soon as I'm able. We received an email that a resident on Forreston is renting out his property to RV dwellers and allowing them to dump their septic waste onto a corner of his property. I've not had a chance to respond to this one, but we will send it to Chuck and the health department as well, as soon as I can. Troy and I met with Ed Viscara, Donna Tremier, and Sussie Niemer. Sissy? How do you say her name? Sissy? It's just Susie. Susie? Oh, it's just Susie. Okay. Um, just the usual spelling. Susie Niemer. She's very nice. I've never met her before. Um, to discuss our concerns regarding shifts in the county's trails and CSD implementation effort. That meeting went very well, and we provided follow-up clarifications that were requested, and I will CC them to you, check when I get a chance. We received a renewal request, a renewed request, that the CSD be amended to allow, okay, well, we already checked, but the, fewer, the fencing. Um, Santa Clara River Watershed Steering Committee meeting scheduled for January 9th has been canceled. No, and not yet rescheduled. So that's it. Good. All right. Council member comments. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Happy New Year. <laughs> okay. Happy New Year. <laughs> Nothing for me? No? Good. I actually, I'm, I'm glad that everybody's here. It's been nice to have everybody back. Yeah. It feels like it's been a long time since we have. Everybody full here. slate here, so it's good to see you. The six musketeers. There you go. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Uh, committee reports. Uh, planning and coordinating. Okay. Uh, well, we had the meeting with the Dell, and um, hopefully they'll hear different things from regional planning <laughs> trails going forward. Um, any from your RTC? No, they have, they're dark. Okay. Uh, publicity, not much to report. Posted the, when they had the van. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I wanted to go out and take a look at it. Yeah. To see what we're actually what they're providing. Our <laughs> the MetroLink. At the MetroLink station. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which. Well, then I think the second day they ended up moving it to somewhere else. I don't think it was there. Apparently, there was pretty widespread power outage um, that day. Yeah. December 28th. I was in the town. So yeah. Um, we did, we are we had power, but are above us on Bear Trap Canyon Road. They were right without power, and then maybe around the Forest area, people without power. So it was well, and then they didn't deploy the truck till like two days after. Yes, it, it yeah. was like a sorry oh, that happened. Done, done, done. It, it took a while to get the power. The power got on in yeah. some of those areas. Okay. Some people were with it out for over a day. Yeah. Uh, somebody, somebody at ARTC oh, said they were out for waste management. Three or four days. You might, yeah, five days. Yeah. Five you might, days. Just, uh, this, that came in the mail. I just got it. So maybe that, that has some information. Okay. There. I haven't read it. Uh, Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, finance. Uh, no, I don't have anything. And it's depleting. Yeah. Are we on our tails? You know, since the county's giving out money, Chuck, I think maybe. Figure out a way to. You know, most of the time, that's for programs that, like, so, I don't know what the actors at the Club asked for, but usually it's, you know, 
put on some kind of program or event or something. So they put a request in for that? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sure they did. They probably did it through the Santa Corita office because our Santa Corita right. office is responsible for that. Okay. Well, yeah. We'll give money up Partners for Health or YMCA or something like that. So yeah, yeah. I'll special. bring it up at the afternoon. Let's put me there. Because they never invite. Supervisor Barger donated money to the Women's Club for the disaster program that they're implementing. The waste management was for the building. Mm -hmm. And Edison was Edison. For, wasn't disaster it wasn't designated. Also? It was just a further. Right. Well, you know, the park companies can kind of do what they want, it's a, you know? Yeah. But the county's going to spread around money for, for goodwill. Yeah, it was for disaster kits, so that they can have disaster kits for people. That's what the county one was for. <clears throat> it wasn't that for mm -hmm. senior citizens? Did, do I remember that? No, that's something else. That was, oh, something, that was something else, else. but he... Well, that's, yeah, that's... Kind of These are the three donations that are on the cover of the journal this last week. Okay. Waste management, Edison, and Bark. I was out of town, so I just picked up my mail today. Going to read it tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jackie, you that meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I think you two did for without because I was unable to make it. Mm -hmm. And and um, <clears throat> I don't know, Troy, you can jump in anytime you want. But um, I I, uh, I was actually impressed with that that Susie and Adele and Don was already sensitive to this, but Susie and Adele seemed to key in really well on our concerns and apparently a number of areas have had problems with the trails people. And there's been a change in the trails management. Mr. Edelman is no longer um, doing the trails. Somebody else is coming in and and so our concerns about uh, the position we had that had been explained to us that day by regional planning was that trails is only going to get trail dedications where they're mapped and it's like well the map is just for regional trails and we got feeder trails, we have local trails, all in our general plan and the AV plan and in our zoning code, our code here, you know, for subdivisions, all are supposed to have plans, I mean trails. <clears throat> and so, um, so that was a big blow that regional planning delivered. They, they bushwhacked us. That was terrible. That right. Plan. And because uh, I was all prepared to talk about, oh, okay. And then they just went totally in a different direction from where they've been the last two years. So we had this meeting and I was really, pleasantly surprised at how receptive everybody seemed to be by uh, with issues not just on trails but also on CSD being tailored for a community right, right. It's like and uh, which I know Kelly you're really key on and um, and also uh, some of the individual aspects for example the fact that we've asked for filming to be done that in a way that doesn't have explosions and helicopters hovering over people's homes and <coughs> fire bombs and gunfire. You know, 90% of, we pointed out that 90% of the filming here is fine, but that 10% is just doesn't belong here. And that, they were very receptive to those concerns. So I, I, have a, I suspect that a different perspective will be shared with us next time we meet with the CSBT. Could be wrong. I've been yeah. wrong before when I thought things were going to change, but I couldn't go that day, Jackie. But I know you and Troy went. Who was it that was in the meeting? It was Adele. Adele, um, Donna, Donna, and Susie Niebuhr. Okay. Who turns out to be Paul Novak's wife. I didn't know that. Do you remember oh, Paul Novak? Okay. <laughs> Paul yes. Novak was the person who, in the end, I think. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know the go, de details going on, but I think. He, in the end, was the man who got rid of the 4,000 pounds of chlorine gas that was right in the downtown area. Yeah, so that, you, I, that you took that project on. Yeah, but I, and I will always be eternally great, grateful to him for that. But there were some, yeah. there were some spicy emails back and forth between the Act of Death Council and him. But yep. in the end, he totally did the right thing. I mean, they were all respectful, right. but they were very, very specific on what the laws are and things like that. So. Yeah. Um, so it's so interesting to see at our next um, meeting with the committee, regional planning, to see how uh, how they respond. Yeah. So what is his wife's position at the county? 
She is, works with Supervisor Barber's office. I don't know exactly. I don't. I she's our parks deputy. She's also like Donna Tamir. She's the head of our San Gabriel Valley office in Pasadena. Oh, okay. But she was meeting with you guys because she's like the supervisor's liaison to, to parks. For parks. She okay. was very impressive. Yes. I was really yeah. impressed by her. Okay. So. Okay. so. And Chuck, if you wouldn't mind expressing our appreciation for that. Oh, okay. Meeting, yeah, can... yeah, Donna said that Adele especially essentially agreed with you guys. So yeah, yeah oh, awesome. that's how I felt. And yeah, one I, of... I felt like you told her something to yeah. agree with everything that you called yeah. up. And one of the other things that we were able to talk about, which is a little bit separate from the CSD, but similar has similar issues, is that you know when a development, no matter what the development is, if it creates a circumstance that increases traffic levels such that a traffic signal is required, then they're supposed to go through the CUP process. That's not just an active, but it's throughout all of the Animal Valley. And Adele said, well, how, how do they do that? I mean, it's a by right use, so they can do it automatically. I said, no, no. The county um, routinely does traffic signal warrant assessments, even for by right developments. It's part of their process. And then Adele said, well, you know, the state changed how you do traffic assessments. You're no longer allowed to look at level of service impacts. You look at vehicle miles traveled. And I said, well, that's true, except for traffic signal warrant analyses have nothing to do with level of service. Those are safety hazards, pedestrian safety, vehicle safety requirements that are in the state code and have nothing to do with level of service or VMT issues. So that. That, those requirements still stand. He, he wasn't aware of that. And so I sent him a follow-up information on that issue. And then he said, I don't understand how you can even deny, for example, in, uh, let's just say, um, uh, I, I don't know, I'll just pick uh, Roosevelt, okay, the community of Roosevelt, how if there, a fast food drive through wants to go in there and it creates so much traffic that there's a traffic signal, how you could deny that if that property is zoned for commercial use because it's ministerial, exempt from CEQA. And we went into a detailed discussion about that's not how CEQA works. And uh, because if, if, if a development has any discretionary element, including things like, well, for example, if, they have, if, if the public works imposes conditions on grading or soil compaction requirements, those are not uh, conditions. If those are the no, kind of no. conditions that are being imposed, it is not a ministerial action, it's absolutely a discretionary action, and therefore subject to CEQA. And I sent him the case law, you know, a, a description of the cases that, that establish that, and also citations from the CEQA, CEQA regulations. So, um, um, because he said building permits are ministerial. Well, they are ministerial, but when you have to do more than a building permit, like a grading permit, or a traffic signal <laughs> installation or whatever, um, so at anyway, it was a really good discussion, and so uh, our other concerns with respect to by right use still triggering potential um, discretionary review and why that would be was something that we really were able to step into and followed up in the emails that, that were sent. So that so that was good. Anyway, thank you, Jackie. Can I ask just where does that leave the CSD? Now you talked to <coughs> Adele and and Susie and, and Donna, but what, what power do they have to make any changes? All they can do is bring back your, your comments to regional planning, but there's nothing that says regional planning has to accept any of it, and they can just continue on. Yes. Oh, and Cal seemed like he was, you know, so did my cues. He talked to me. Oh, cool. All right, uh, beautification and dumping. Um, there seems to be a lot of not rolls going on that I see visible on Sierra Highway, but I haven't seen anything <laughs> uh, out this way as, as, as much recently. I, I still am frustrated. I got a finally got a response about the three or four refrigerators that are on boiling point, and got a response from the county said it's not on a county road, so always management. Oh, um, the frustrating thing is that. I, it, it's actually the fire road that goes up the mountain. So oh, sure. I don't know who, uh, other than the county, would be responsible. So um, yeah, 
and I, I think they might end up needing to find their way down to the county road so that they can be removed. So I, I'm actually just way. concerned that the kids are going to climb yes. in or something than anything else. Yeah. Uh, but they've been there for like six months. It's terrible. Oh, Film Coalition. Nothing to do that for. It's been quiet. Thank God. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. don't need nothing. Don't need nothing. I don't need anything. That's right. Industrial yeah. uh, aesthetics, uh, for that. Uh, traffic safety. We're going to make a request for the four way stop so that people send in what they think. Okay. And Are you going to do that um, like via journal or something and then have people? Well, I mean, if we, we I'm sure there were journal and the Acton Ago Delsa News will report out that we asked for suggestions. Okay. So. I mean, they can just send them to the town council email address, and, or if council members have ideas, we yeah. put yeah. them together. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm hearing only half of what you're saying. About the, the uh, request for um, four-way stop signs on Red Rover, oh, okay. we talked about earlier, and then the idea was, well, maybe other people have other ideas, like locations. thinking about um, out near Meadowlark. Yeah. Correct. And so I suggested that, that if re residents or Council members have ideas for other places to just let us know, and we'll compile it into one big ask. Ask. If that makes sense. The, the, um, the accident on the freeway due to the snow, the overturn truck car oh, collision, oh, that took all of the 14 northbound, put it on the uh, Elisa Elisa Canyon, Carson Mesa. Uh, country yes. the Carson Mesa was backed up. Um, Carson way. Mesa? Carson Mesa? Yes. Yes. No, it's yes. because it's like way, you know, ways. Uh, really zero yes. highway, so totally. They had them coming from Crown Valley all through my neighborhood yeah. to Aliso Canyon. They had to shut Aliso Canyon from Y8 um, yeah. access up. Or, you know, the because floors. of snow? They or? had a sign on there. They weren't able to show it through. There. They were going up what and down. This? Well, that, what was I? This yeah, was just after 7 o'clock. They had somebody there. Yeah. 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 No, I, I did. There was so much traffic it was on Carson and Mesa that you couldn't move. Oh. And then Aliso Canyon, they're all the mad way. and they're passing each other around corners. And it's, I'm surprised there wasn't a fatal accident. Yeah. It, literally, there was a car every two or three well, seconds. Maybe there's a car down in the ditch and nobody knows so there. So when they're going to do that, I mean, well, I would told the person in Aliso Canyon probably could have made a million dollars in tickets. Yeah, if they could have gotten it. Well, they <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's one helicopter ride we wouldn't have objected you know, to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> well, well, on the freeway. So maybe making that recommendation too, just put it all. I mean, I don't know what the solution for that is, but I, I think Carson Mesa just dumps you up on uh, Angeles Force Highway again, right? Yeah. So it's, it's dirt. Yeah, it's dirt. It dirt. is so soft, slushy and dirt. And nobody it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like people got stuck and yeah. there was. It was all over next door, and it was a nightmare. I wasn't in town, but it sounded like it was pretty bad. Was I bad. was in town, and I missed it. No, it was. I, I, we went just from my, my house to Lock and it took us half an hour. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. That's yeah. only a four-minute drive. I had to drop myself off at Lawrence's house on Kentucky Street. And I was streets. probably one of those oh. people. And it, it, it took around 15 or 20 minutes to get from Aliso Canyon to Kentucky Springs. Oh, oh wow. OK. How long did you? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, how long is the time? Like 15 minutes. Yeah. Literally, it was like being on the 405. Yeah, it was worse. It was yeah, it was horrible. Well, people didn't know where they, they were, they were being diverted to. No, either. I don't know if they, they were just were following Google. No, they, yeah, they, they were, they were going down the end of no, the street <coughs> where it happens. Yeah, they do a wash, and, and then they find it. Because some GPSs oh, take people that's into that's the Carson Mesa that goes into the wash. Jeez. And so then they turn around, and it's like, they didn't know where they were. They were just yeah, trying they to get out the freeway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! That's, that's really good. That's it's, where is that Soledad? Right there? It, I it turned down Soledad, Carson. Yeah, yeah. Cause oh, that, my um, God. That backup? It, it was, the, yeah, big, was the big accident, yeah. fatality of the uh, car hitting the big rig? On the, oh, that's when it snowed? So yeah. So, yeah. 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 I said we are on Cedar Cross. Yeah. Oh, Cedar Cross. Yeah. 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 I, I couldn't believe the amount of people pouring off on why what's that why is why they're at. It's like why are they going through 
Yeah, then they get on Lisa and they were just sitting on Lisa. Yeah. It was a mess. Yeah. You can't even say one of those things like, well, at least I was moving. And those are people on Soledad trying to take a shortcut around to go through. And, and you could tell they didn't know where they were going because where Elisa goes into uh, four lanes, they were all in the right lane waiting to turn on Carson Mesa, but eventually they were back <laughs> in the so, so I went around, you know, just took the one lane, went past a bunch of them, and then once you get past right. Carson Mesa, there was no traffic right. going that way. So it's like, anyway. It was a mess. Yes, yeah. glad nobody else got out of it. Yeah. All right, all right. High speed rail. Lovely it is. Um, the only thing I've got to report is that I've had several people contact me ready to start working yeah. on the draft EIR. So I've got four, five, six names uh, ready to start. Yeah, we've gotten a few emails. So when do you, should we just pick a date and a time and just make ourselves available and then people can contact us if they can or can't come and when they can come, but we can start on Yeah, should, when, when, when you want to do that, Jackie, you're swamped. Let's see. Well, this week's bad, but in two weeks from now, we can do that. Okay. So, um, When's the date it has to be? Uh, well, the so plan was uh, we don't have the draft EIR out yet, yeah. but we were going to sort of put a group yeah, together yeah, and start look at the old. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, you know, I, we have all that information. Um, and Aveva provided some of it, and we just have it's on the internet too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, January, I don't know, what, what day? Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what days are better? For, I don't care. How about you guys? What do you think? The days that are the other ones. So we were gonna we were gonna have a, a meeting here at the library. Yeah. To try to help people understand what their job would be when we get the draft. Or we could even have it to perk it up. I mean, that's fine too. Yeah. Fine if they don't mind. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like the twenty third is the Thursday. Okay. Um, that. Now are we are we talking? At night or during the day, or whatever you guys want, whatever. I'm, I, I just have to pick a bait at two forty. Are we talking about January? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't do during the day, but I could do early evening. Okay. But don't buy. Oh, is that a school board meeting night? School board meetings yeah. this Thursday. Yeah. It might be. So that's a school board night. So twenty second. Twenty second. Kelly, what do you think? During the day or at night? I'm fine either way. Okay. We may, um, we may need to have more than one meeting to. Oh to yeah. Help. Oh, we will. We but will. we need to start. I know we so, need to start and get get people and, going. Yeah, and I'd say we could just do a get a schedule kind of thing going on. There yeah. And Maybe plan. that first meeting can get yeah. ideas and then populate a, a time, and then they'll okay. be hard and fast. So, so Jeremiah is good in the evening, but the twenty third is a school board meeting. So maybe the twenty second. Is that okay? okay? Is that all right? Yes, yeah. sir. No. Mm -hmm. And what time can you, is good for you, Jeremiah? Anytime after like four Yeah, but yeah. traffic control, sure. And then did you get that meeting date, January 22nd at 5? Okay, perfect. Now, are we um, rescheduling the meeting on the 20th? Martin Luther King, I or don't no? think so. Okay, so no meeting. No meeting. So we'll go to the 1st of February. Yeah. The third. The third. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean that. The first but it also says the 20th yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, the, I made the mistake. And then I corrected it, but they printed it out before I corrected it. Yeah. <laughs> I corrected it on Yeah, there you go. All right. Fine job. The items from the agenda. All right, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 9.57. No. So you do, what did you want to 